Well, good morning, everyone. We're glad you're here on this cold morning. It was re- it's cold out there this morning, isn't it? It sure is. Um, Jennifer is sick today. Uh, she had called me and said that her blood pressure medicine kind of whacked her all out. So she's not going to be here today. So we don't have an organist. But we're going to play it on CD. Um, I want to give you a couple of reminders. Um, if you haven't handed your pledge card in, please try to get them in this week. If you can, you know, mail them in or whatever you need to do uh, or drop them off uh, because Dottie needs to put them in, in for our budget thing. And I know that we haven't given ours yet too. So but, um, just a reminder of that. Uh, also, I want to remind, I give you, there's a thank you card that I got here from Tom Dye, who lost their house, and he's thanking everybody for the donation that we gave to him from the church, and he's thanking you for that. Uh, is there youth today? No youth today. Um, next week is youth. Is there any other announcements? making this announcement because I am guilty of it this past week of not calling in uh, my reservation. Uh, We're noticing that it's happening less and less and we're having more people show up than uh, whatever. And it hasn't been a problem because we're right around, you know, the 40 mark. But um, we have been asked to do that and uh, so, in fact, I'm going to remind myself maybe as soon as I get home uh, or, well, no, I'll let you guys finish up your work here, but maybe before the game starts. Uh, to call the church and just put in your reservation because we're supposed to do that not just for our local church but that's something that conference and district asks us to do too right i mean we're allowed to have 50 percent now which is 60 okay i have 52 chairs set up in here so we're keeping pretty close but please Uh, remember to do that the um, prayer partners have um, adopted a new study for the next five um, sessions Um, February 22nd, which is a Monday at 2 o'clock, will be our first session with Max Licato's He Chose the Nails. So once a month, prayer partners meet here, and we do the study with Max Licato on Right Now Media. And um, everyone is welcome to come and join us. We pray geographically throughout the building. But if you would like to um, do the study on your own, or if you would like to join us to do the study here and would like books, I'd be happy to order those books for you. Um, Each of our prayer partners have a study guide and a hardcover book, and um, it's been less than $12 um, for the two books. So um, keep that in mind, pray about it, and let me know if I can help. Pat Fuller needed a new curtain for her Sunday school room, and we bought a new rod and a new curtain. Now, out in the kitchen is a a really nice, wide Travis rod. The curtain isn't worth it. But if anybody would like a free Travis rod, it's available just for the taking. I was telling Pastor that up north where my sister lives, they've got six foot of snow and it's still snowing. So prayers for them. Well, spring's right around the corner. Right around the corner. Is there any other announcements? Are there any joys or concerns this morning? All our local firemen for the last 48 hours need some prayers. They've been having two structure fires in the last 48 hours. So all, all our locals need support right now. Uh, people are wondering where Virginia Burrett is. Please pray for her. She's it's got an upset stomach, and, um, and she's been more confused lately. So please keep my mother in prayer. Thanks.
continued prayers for my um, mom's significant other. He um, had his foot amputated and he just got sent to St. Joe's for um, rehab, so. Easton would like prayers for a friend, Ari. She's in the hospital. We need to continue prayers for Doris go down as well. Dwayne Hederman has been having some, he needs sure could be some lifting up in prayers as well. Anybody else? Um, I recently applied for a job kind of in our agency. Um, the, where I work for Arbor is under Catholic Charities and also um, the Healthy Families Organization is under Catholic Charities as well. And I actually recently applied for a family support specialist, so I just hope that if it's in God's will and time that I actually get it, because it'll be very good for me and my family and things like that, so. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you've heard the names. You know the concerns. You know the needs. So, Lord, we just ask that you lift each and every person up. Be with those that aren't here today. Be with them as well. Lord, and we just ask that you be with us as we continue to battle this pandemic that's going on and that people can get their vaccinations and and all that's going on, Lord, we just ask that you uh, be with us. And we know that 2021 will be a better year because you have promised. Lord, we just ask that you be with our leaders of this country as well. Be with them, Lord. Uh, help them to lead like you would lead. Help them to come to know you. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Please join me in the unison prayer. God, we are here for you, to worship you, and to hear from the Spirit, and to learn, to live, Son. Fill this place with your presence. We cannot help but know that you are here. Protect us from our enemies who seeks to destroy what we have come together to do. As we learn more about who you are and what you have done, let us give back to you in worship and praise. This day is for you alone. Amen. Join us in the opening him. It won't be what's on the screen. It's on eagle's wings.
Greet one another with the love of Christ in your hearts. Jewish Children's Church. There's no children's story, just children's church. <laughs> they were waiting for one. I could have gave them one, I suppose. Join us for the next hymn. This one is on the screen.
organist, don't we? <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for all the people that make this church work. Sometimes we have upside down things happen, but you know, Lord, you are always there. It doesn't mean that you don't have a, um, a funny side of you, Lord, do we know that. We all know that we all have those sides. So, Lord, we just say thank you for everything that you've given us and all the people who take part. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Talk about learning things new. I learned something new last week. That the pictures on the screen back here, I didn't have to turn around. <laughs> <laughs> the first reading is Proverbs 30, 7 through 9. Oh God, I beg two favors from you before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For if I grow rich, I may become content without God. And if I am too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is Second Peter chapter 1, verses 15 through 21. I've backed up a couple verses. But the Lord Jesus Christ has showed me that my days here on earth are numbered, and I am soon to die. As long as I am still here, I intend to keep sending these reminders to you hoping to impress them so clearly upon you that you will remember them long after I am gone. For we have not been telling you fairy tales when we explain to you the power of our Lord Jesus Christ and his coming again. My own eyes have seen his splendor and his glory. I was there on the holy mountain when he shone out with honor given him by God his Father. I heard that glorious, majestic voice calling down from heaven, saying, This is my much-beloved Son. I am well pleased with him. So we have seen and proved that what the prophets said came true. You will do well to pay close attention to everything they have written. For like lights shining into dark corners, their words help us to understand many things that otherwise would be dark and difficult. But when you consider the wonderful truth of the prophets, words, then the light will be dawn in your souls and Christ, the morning star, will, share in, will shine in your hearts. For no prophecy recorded in scripture was ever thought up by the prophet himself. It was the Holy Spirit within these godly men who gave them true messages from God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Carol. Now, if anybody would like to read scripture, just let me know and we'll put you on the list. You know, I'm gonna start out today with an old story. Remember Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Remember that? Do kids even still know that story? It is a classic, right? Well, let us set aside the idea that Goldilocks was guilty of home invasion, burglary, 
and destruction of property. But you never heard Gord Lex this way, right? <laughs> Plus, I want, I'm not even sure what the moral of the story is. Does anybody here know the moral of the story? But in the 19th century, fairy tale did give us some concept we all know and it is a great place to start our conversation today. Goldilocks breaks into a house of the three bears and he tr she tries three bowls of porridge. One is too hot, one is too cold, and one is, now say it with me, just right. <laughs> and she finishes it. Goldilocks tries three chairs, and the third one, well, say it with me, just right. She sits, and she smashes it. Exhausted from her larceny and vandalism, she finds one bed that is too hard, one bed too soft, and one bed is just right. And falls asleep. The three bears come home and discover the damage. Much of my disappointment, this little felon escapes. But we have two, we, we are left with two words worthy goal of how to do life. And that is just right. <laughs> do life just right. Wouldn't that be wonderful? If food was the right temperature, furniture just comfortable enough, getting life just right, not too much, not too little, when it comes to demands of work, financial security, and our emotions, relationships, what if we enjoyed just the amount of romance, just the right amount of caution, or were motivated by just the right amount of ambition? In other words, balance, balance of life. Avoiding the extremes, you might even call it God's sweet spot. Doesn't that sound like a nice way to live? What is a sweet spot? Well, tennis players talk about a sweet spot on their racket that the ball jumps off with maximum velocity and precision in no vibration. A career counselor describes the sweet spot as a job where you do what you love and do it well and get paid for it. I love my job. And I get paid for it. I don't know if I do it well enough, but I love my job. In the same way, there is a place God wants you to live where you are living with purpose. Not running too fast, or too slow. We need balance. In contentment is God's sweet spot. Now let me give you a little background of where I'm getting this sermon from. Which brings us to the prayer of Agar. In the author, his author of Proverbs 30. We are covering that entire chapter this week and next. His prayer is found in verses 7 through 9, which Carol read earlier, which we'll, we'll read in a moment. But first, let me say this there is a chance, even if you are a regular Bible reader, that you have never paid much attention to Agar. Don't, don't be embarrassed. You're not alone. <laughs> he was not really on my radar until I happened to see a recent book 
that a colleague of mine had told me about. The Prayer of Agar by J. Payleitner. Of what I was sharing this week and next week is drawn from that little book. I need to warn you that Agar's writing, his delivery, is almost like a stand-up comedian <laughs> who specializes in observational humor. In my head, his voice is not sarcastic, but he does have a little attitude, and I kind of like it. Also in Proverbs 30, seven through nine is the only prayer, is the only prayer in all of Proverbs. Considering all the topics covered in the litanary devices, including the book of Proverbs, that is a bit surprising. That alone makes Agar's prayer pretty special. So here is a short prayer of a formula for living in God's sweet spot. Or living in, in the life of just right. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. That's in Proverbs 30, 7 through 9. Now, I ask you to bring your Bibles today so you can follow along. And if you read that, it's a very, it's an amazing prayer. You think about it. It's an amazing prayer. And it's the only prayer in Proverbs. The only one. Can you see the potential of living in God's sweet spot? Agar's prayer gives me neither poverty nor riches, but gives me, gives me only my daily bread. He is saying, Lord, help me find balance. Help me avoid extremes. Help me trust you. How many here trust God 100%? You've got to. You've got to. It's hard as a human being to trust God and rely on God 100%. It is hard. But we need to. We all have a different kind of balance. All of this is saying is we need to find balance in our life. That prayer is what first drew me to Agar. And we are going for, to focus on these three verses next week. Today, we are going to undercover a half a dozen takeaways from the rest of the chapter. Takeaways that you can apply to your life so that we can really dig into Agar's prayer. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to apply all of your word to our lives. The verses we know by heart and the ones you surprise us with. Open our ears to hear, our minds to think, and to our hearts to love. Help us to cherish the journey and live in your sweet spot. Bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'm going to jump to Proverbs 31. Proverbs has 31 chapters. The Bible scholars agree that Solomon personally wrote and compiled chapters 1 through 29. Chapter 31 was written by King Lemuel. You may recognize the chapter, especially if you are involved in women's ministry, because much of it describes a wife of noble character, 
My wife is of noble character. I hope all the wives are of noble character. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband is respected at the city gate. Her children rise and call her blessed. Husbands and children should read Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 is a popular theme at women's conferences. Proverbs 30 is written by Agar. And most people never have heard of him. The chapter, the prayer of Agar himself, came come as a bit of surprise to a lot of us. If you are paying attention, that was your first takeaway. Courtesy to the friend of Agar. When exploring God's word... There are all kinds of characters, stories, and rabbit tales that will surprise you. So what do, you we, so what do we know about Agar? Not much. The opening words of the chapter tell us that he was a son of J.K. The Bible scholars say that he, he may have been from northern Arabia. That is all the history We have, and that's okay. That's okay. His words made it into God's book, which is a pretty good reminder that you don't have to be famous to make a difference. There is no way I can compare myself to Moses, Abraham, Paul, or other spiritual giants of the Bible, but Agar... I can relate with him. He seems to be like a regular guy. You got to love that idea. They are quite a few historical characters who show up for a single scene or only a brief mention in the Bible, but still leave a memorable impression. Examples. You all remember Simeon, right? Simeon was an old prophet, barely shows up in Luke chapter 2. He meets Mary and Joseph at the temple and holds the infant Jesus in his arms. And he predicts Jesus will be the light of the world, causing the fall and rise of many people. Do you know the name Joshebet? You can make the case of her action launched biblical history. The mother of Aaron, Miriam, and Moses. She sent her three-month-old son floating down the Nile in a reed basket to rescue him from the Egyptian death squads. Her name appears only twice in the entire Bible. Then think about the thief on the cross. We do not know, we do not even know his name. But he recognizes Jesus, confesses his brokenness, and Jesus promised him, Truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. It's in Luke 23, verse 43. That passage suggests that there is no lag time between our time on earth and our entrance into heaven. That is, that is good to know. I can identify with Simeon and Josabed in a thief on the cross and with Agar. They made a difference. They found their purpose. And so can I and so can you. That was takeaway too. Seek God's purpose. We may not be famous, but we can make a difference. After a brief introduction of Agar begins his chapter with something that I love and respect so much. 
He admits his human limitations. I am weary, God, but I can prevail. Surely I am only a brute, not a man. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor I have attained to the knowledge of the Holy One. That's in Proverbs 30, verses 2 and 3. That is an attitude we all need. When we come to prayer or study of the Bible, Agar humility is so refreshing. He admits he is a brutish and beastly until he meets God face to face. Agar is well aware of his own, of his not attaining the knowledge of the Holy One. He knows we should also know if the, creator, if the creator of the universe showed up in this room right now. It would blow our minds. It would blow our minds. We could not handle it. That was takeaway three. Appreciation, God's undefinable ability. Never put God in a box. Have you ever heard that saying? Never put God in a box. He is beyond our imagination. Moving along, then in verse 4, suddenly Agar gains confidence and starts asking questions worth asking. Who has gone up to heaven and came down? Whose hands has gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is the name of his son? Surely you know. That's in verse, that's in chapter 30, verse 4. Six questions we all should be asking. Who has visited heaven? Who gathered the wind? Who controls the seas? Who made the earth? What is his name? What is the name of his son? Agar answered his own question by saying, surely you know. Do you love his confidence? Don't you just love that confidence? Is the same confidence passed in, expressed, I'm sorry, expressed in Psalms 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. Agar is confirming that anyone who considers, to, considers the wonders of nature, the wind and the sea and the earth itself, must acknowledge the Creator. If you cannot see the Creator in our nature, come see me. We may not like the snow, but it is beautiful when it first snows. We may not like the fall leaves falling in our yard. We have to rake them up. But it's beautiful. The sunshine is beautiful. Surely you know, he says, creation proves there is a creator. If you do not see that, you are probably a little too distracted with your own personal accomplishments to see God's accomplishments. The first four questions describe the creator and the next question asks, what is his name? The answer is easy. Keep in mind that Agar's writing appeared in the middle of the Old Testament God had several names, Yahweh, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, and etc. But the question, what is his son's name? 
probably sent shockwaves through the halls of Solomon's temple. Hey, everyone, Agar is proclaiming. He is proclaiming to the world that God will have a son. Keep in mind that Agar's writing is close to a thousand years before the birth of Christ. Prophecy about the Messiah was a major topic of discussion among God's chosen people. Anticipation of the Savior was the focus of the Hebrew people, and it still is. But before Agar, there was barely a hint in any of the ancient writings that the Messiah would be the Son of God. Agar asked, what is his name of the God's Son? Asking this kind of question at this point in history shows that Agar was a true prophet. This was the fourth takeaway from Proverbs 30. Ponder God's timeline. Today we have the benefits of seeing how the Old Testament points to the Father and the Holy Spirit. We should be on the edge of our seats knowing that we live between the first and the second coming of Christ. Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6. We meet Agar. He establishes humility. He stuns the audience with insight about God and God's Son. Then he takes the breath before his short prayer to endorse scripture. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield of those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. Proverbs 30 verses 5 and 6. Agar pro provides another ionic twist for us. Right there in the book of Proverbs, he writes, every word is God of God is flawless, and do not add to his words. The paradox is that Agar warns us not to add to God's word. The chapter written by Agar ends up in our Bible, how is that possible? It is a perfect reminder that the Bible was written by man, but inspired by God. The writers were inspired in a moment, but the Holy Spirit saw when Agar wrote those words as he, he was at the moment speaking from God. That concept is explained well in 2 Peter 1, verses 20 and 21. Above all, you must realize that no prophecy is scripture ever came from a prophet's own understanding or from a human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. That was in a New Living Translation. In other words, God-inspired word can, can, does, and should stand on its own. Agar's chapter somehow made the cut. We can trust it. Every word of God is flawless. That was takeaway five. Affirm God's authority. Trusting the Bible is foundational for believers. Before we pray or do anything, we need to align ourselves with God's word. Proverbs 30, verses 7 through 9. After affirming God's word, the next three verses of Proverbs 30 are a prayer of Agar. 
all about living in the light of God's truth and trusting him in our daily bread and finding his sweet spot. Finding a sweet spot for your life. So come back next week for that reveal. At the end of the prayer, Agar is only one-third of the way through his heavenly writing assignment. From there, he tosses out a few lessons explaining habits we just should not be doing. Things like slandering co-workers, dishonoring parents, dishonoring our spouse, judging others while justifying our own shortcomings or looking down on the less fortunate. Then he finishes Proverbs 30 with five cautious lists that sound like a bit from a comedian who specializes in observational humor. Do you ever notice did you ever notice, did you ever wonder about things like the first list serves a reality check. Agar lists four things that here on earth are never satisfied. There are three things that are never satisfied, four that never say enough. In the grave, in the barren womb, the land which is never satisfied with water, and fire, which never says, stays, says enough. That's in Proverbs 30, 15b and 16. Agar wants us to know that this world is broken. We had our chance at paradise in the Garden of Eden. But we are living in a fallen world. There's, there are tribulations we cannot escape. The grave, death is inevitable. But please remember, our final destination is not yet determined. We only have so much time here on earth and eternity awaits. This is a spiritual truth. A woman who cannot bear children, this is an emotional truth. If you know a woman or a couple aching for a child, you recognize this emotional burden. There are so many hurting people around us. The question we need to ask ourselves is, how can we bring comfort and compassion to friends, neighbors, strangers, family members who are hurting. The thirsty land is a physical truth. Back in middle school science class, you learned about the water cycle. And you learned about how it never ends. The rain, plants, underground water rivers, oceans, and clouds all play their part in this clear example of God's organizational creation. And then we have fire. The last item on his list is another physical reminder of God's power and provision. Fire gives us light, cooks our food, and keeps us warm. But it can also destroy the properties of fire apply here on earth for all eternity. Then we have list two. This is a kind of a five quirky list. We will call it amazing. There are three things that are too amazing for me for that I do not understand the way that an eagle in the sky or the way the eagle in the sky flies, or the way the snake on a rock, or the way the ship on the high seas, or the way of a man with a young woman. That's in Proverbs 30, 18 and 19. Agar's second list confirms that God's ways are beyond human imagination. 
And that is the way it should be. Personally, I prefer a God who is better, has a better handle on life than I do. I would get it wrong. Hagar gives us four examples of how a creator of the universe works in ways we may never understand. How an eagle flies. How a snake moves. How a boat stays afloat. How God designed attraction, love, romance, and sex in pre procreation. With this list, Agar reveals his appreciation for God's design when it comes to biological and physical human nature. An eagle in flight. A snake slithering. How a boat floats. We think we are so smart because scientists today calculate a buoyancy of water displacement, but we forgot it was God who designed that all, all of that. We didn't have scientists when, no, uh, when they built the ark. God knew that that would float. You think Noah knew what he was doing? Building a boat? List three. We will call this human mistakes. Under three things, the earth trembles. Under four, it cannot bear up. A servant who becomes king a godless fool who gets plenty to eat. Temple woman who gets married. A servant who displaces her mistress. That's in Proverbs 30, verses 21 through 23. Agar may not be talking about literal earthquakes here, but human mistakes can cause the relationship in the kingdom to tremble and crumble. Think about society today. It's not God who's ruling our society. It's people. People are the ones that are ruining our society. We men are the ones that make the mistakes. God doesn't make mistakes. We are the ones that make the mistakes. He gives us four examples when someone without experience or training becomes king. When a godless fool gets everything they want without earning their way. For example, lottery winners or children of self-made millionaires. Another human mistake is getting married for a reason other than love. It is good advice. Do not marry for money or lust or spite. Or escape your parents. Marry because you cannot imagine living without that person. Then we have list four. Ants, hyrexes, locusts, lizards are stars of Agar's fourth list, which we call small wonders. Four things on earth are small, yet they are extremely wise. Ants are creation, creatures of little strength. Yet they store up their food in the summer. Hy Hyrexes are creatures of little power. Yet they make their home in crags. Locusts have no king. Yet they, they're advanced together in ranks. And lizards can be caught with, it, with the hand. Yet they are found in king's palaces. Proverbs 30 24 through 28. We can learn from these creature critters. Mostly they take full advantage of the limited gifts granted them by the Creator. Agar might be telling us to take ourselves, we take ourselves too seriously. We are not to panic with minor details. 
Or maybe the main lesson of this list is that God sees and cares about it all. So the big picture in the small, smallest details of life. Agar's final list presents four images of those who seemingly stand tall, all of whom might be a verge of fall. Let us call it the downfall of kings. There are three things that are stately in, this, in their strife. Four that move with stately bearing. A lion, mighty among beasts, who retreats before nothing, is strut, strutting roosters and he goats, and a king secure against revolt. If you play the fool and exalt yourself, or if you plan evil, clap your hands over your mouth. For churning of cream produces butter, and twisting of the nose produces blood. So stirring up anger produces strife. Proverbs 30, 29 through 33. So what is our Agar telling us? He is warning us against destructive pride. Proverbs 16 says, Pride goes before destruction. 2 Corinthians 10, 17 says, Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Consider Agar's five list. That is a lot to take in. The physical world has limits. There are mysteries that cannot, we cannot understand. Humans make mistakes. Small things matter. Even earthly kings need to remember there is ultimate authority. Those lists were take away six. Anticipate God's eternity. We are not home yet. All those questions you have will be answered. Heaven has no limits. So keep asking questions. God is not surprised or stumped. The creator is the king. In a sense, he sees it all and he knows it all. And he will continue doing a much better job than any one of us will be able to do. So let's close with this. So what do you think of Agar? He has got everything you need in a friend. He makes you laugh and he makes you think and he tells you like it is. He gave us six solid takeaways today. And we have not even scratched the surface on his prayer. Before next week, go ahead and read all of Proverbs 30. And I want your reports on my desk. <laughs> Just kidding. But please, read Proverbs 30. Appreciate Agar's prophecy. Look again at those lists and consider especially the prayers of Agar. Here in the center point of the prayer is this. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Proverbs 30, verse 8. Let us close in prayer. Lord, we just... Thank you for Proverbs 30 and Agar. We thank you for the mysteries in the Bible. As humans, we will never understand all of what we read. But we know one thing, that you will do a better job 
than we will ever do in this life. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand if you're able, we're in spirit, and join us in the closing hymn, which is on the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> communion. Today's Communion Sunday. So get your little cups out. Peel away the top layer. On the day, that, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he said, "Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me always." And he took the cup. He said, this is my blood shed for you. Drink from this cup as often as you can. Remember what I have done for you. Take and drink. Now, if you will join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now stand if you're able, we're in spirit, and join us in the closing hymn. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. Gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will.
homework assignment for this week is to read Proverbs 30. Go in peace and love of Christ in your hearts and take God with you. Amen.